Next step that we have to worry about is money and budget, whether it's on health care or everything else that keeps the state going. So we know about the shift in the in the healthy families, uh, you know, the 800,000 or so that will get in, in, absorbed into hopefully federally supported programs for them. So Josh, what else? The governor signed the budget. The Democrats are crowing that uh, we have a budget on time. <laughs> yeah, we have a budget. We'll, we'll see how long it lasts. You know, I think I think I'll, I'll, the, the critics of this budget are saying that this is a budget that's predicated on passing uh, the governor's tax measure this November. It's predicated on what still may be some rosy revenue estimates, some rosy uh, perhaps overestimates of how much money the state will get from closing down all those redevelopment authorities and, and seizing their assets. But what we ended up with this week is that the, the governor used his line, line item veto authority at the last minute to strike about $130 million uh, in spending out of this $91.3 billion general fund budget. We ended up with a, a, a reserve fund of about $948 million, which is close to the billion that he wanted from the get-go. So I guess that, you know, that, that's a mission accomplished mm -hmm. for, for Governor Brown. Um, uh, cuts to the poor are at the core of this budget, as, as they have been over the last couple of years. Uh, there were reforms to CalWORKs, the, the state's welfare to work program, and of course the elimination of the Healthy Families program that we talked about, <clears throat> which is going to transfer about 880,000 children over into the Medi-Cal program. And that's really where a lot of the, the vitriol came this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Republicans were quick to blame Democrats of abandoning low-income children, uh, even though, the, you know, Republicans have stood in the way of any sort of revenue uh, adjustments to, to pay for that program, uh, they, they felt the cuts should have been elsewhere. Uh, uh, they, uh, they also derided the, the governor and, and their Democratic peers for not addressing pension reform in this budget and, and certain other things, but... Uh, the, well, what about the home health care workers? That was a hot item that the unions were on the street over that one? And they, they ended up preserving a lot of what they wanted to preserve. There, you know, it's not all good news. There, there was... Uh, those receiving Cal grants at private schools are going to see a cut in their awards. There was a loss of additional child care openings. But some of the home health care, some of that stuff did get saved from, from, the, uh, from the knife at, at, at the last minute. Uh, one, of the all, uh, one of the other things that people have been complaining about, though, is that uh, part, buried in one of these budget bills was something to move the governor's tax initiative, which is actually a, a state constitutional amendment, to the top of the ballot so that it appears first among the blizzard of, of ballot measures that people are going to be called upon to decide this November. And in fact, there's now a lawsuit uh, by uh, Molly Munger and the people who are, who are behind the other tax initiative uh, saying that, that this is not fair, you know, that, that the governor uh, got his, his allies in the uh, legislature to, to bump his to the well, top. Let's talk but, about the chances. I mean, you know, yeah. there's some studies that have shown that if you, if you have a long list of stuff to vote on and, and the one at the top, if it's involving money, may be worth, uh, that position may be worth another point or two right. because as voters go down the list, they get tired of spending money and they start voting no on the lower yeah. down. Uh, a money. point or two ain't going to save this. That was my question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this was in the mid-60s a month ago. Now it's polling at 52. Yeah. The, the Howard Jarvis people, the California Taxpayer Association people, have not even run a no campaign yet. Uh, how in the world is Jerry Brown going to pass this thing? Uh, you know as well as I do that the general rule of thumb of is if you're not starting up somewhere beyond 60 points as, as you're going into the final stretch before Election Day, you're probably not going to pass. And with something like this just hovering right on the margin there without a no campaign yet, it seems like it's going to be an uphill battle, especially when, he, you know, there's still criticism out there for not addressing public pensions, when high-speed rail is still moving forward. That was forward my question. What like can that. he do? I mean, it's short of a huge well, sweeping public pension and, deal? And, and, I, I think I think the, the strategy is going to be to, to pound home the idea that all of this revenue goes to education in some way. It goes 89% to K-12 education, 11% to community colleges. And these are things that time after time people say they don't want to see cut. And if, if, if the governor and his allies can make a very compelling case that this will be a, a, a school Mageddon uh, <laughs> on the day after Election Day, then, then that's, that's their, their best hope of getting well, the people the present budget. Uh, does uh, say that there would be no more cuts to higher education, at least at this point. 
at, at this point, at if this that point, tax measure passes. Yes. Yeah. So he has this wide window with an interested group of people, college mm -hmm. students, number yeah. one. Uh, and uh, do you think that that will play a, a role in whether he's able to get this passed? A absolutely. I mean, if you look at what uh, Assembly Speaker Perez said uh, upon the, the signing of this budget, what, what do you... What, he phrased it as it's eliminating the decades old structural deficit, which is something that people like you and I like to talk about, mm -hmm. protecting public education and ensuring California's UC and CSU students will not face another year of fee hikes. Mm -hmm. Education is at the core of all of this, because, and rightly so, since it constitutes mm -hmm. such a tremendous segment of the state budget. I mean, you can't talk about the budget without talking about the impact on education. But, you know, to some extent, this budget says, you know, it, it sort of isolates education, K-12 and community college education off to the side and said, if you want to pay for this, you must pass this tax increase. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if people actually swallow that. Right, and I, this is the first budget where we had a, a, a Democratic majority in the legislature that could pass a budget, right? Because the proposition right. w without without passed. any uh, without any revenue increases, right? They they are now free to pass by a simple majority. So yeah. but they still I need the two thirds <laughs> to raise taxes. They still need the two yeah, thirds to, to raise, raise taxes. taxes. Well, Paul, uh, those people who you're going to report upon, those who are crazy about our state parks, mm -hmm. got a little bit of a break in this budget process. Th they did actually. Uh, we've been hearing all year since May of uh, last year when Governor Brown first announced that he was going to close 70 of the 280 state parks in California, that basically, you know, a quarter of the state park system was gonna close, these beloved places which are on our tourism brochures and which people, frankly, on the right and the left, it's one of the only parts of state government that everybody loves. Um, you know, it's hard for, to find anyone who gets mad at park rangers. It's like, <laughs> that's part of who we are as a, as a people, the state and the, and the natural resources. But what happened was, uh, as part of this budget deal, which Brown signed on Wednesday night, um, a, a couple of legislators, Joe Simidian in Palo Alto, Noreen Evans from the North Bay, uh, put basically they found $41 million in other pots of money, you know, uh, water treatment money, energy pots, road pots, and put that into state parks. Uh, Governor Brown uh, line item vetoed 75% of that out, but he kept $10 million. That $10 million combined with 40 different deals, uh, private donations to these parks. Everybody from Rayleigh's supermarket, which gave some money to the Big Sur Land Trust, to you know the city of Calusa, uh, all kicked in for their own local park. So uh, what we found yesterday was that uh, 40 of the 70 have deals to keep them open for another year. 25 of the 70 are in negotiations and probably will be saved. And five are what we're calling orphan parks, which don't have deals. And unless someone steps forward uh, by later this summer, those parks could close, right. those other five. Can, can you specify who you want to give money to out of the five that uh, are yeah, left? Yeah, you know, the, the California State Parks Foundation, which is a, a Bay Area-based nonprofit, is helping coordinate a lot of this. Uh, the five parks are, uh, let's see if I can remember them all, the Benicia State Recreation Area, uh, Zmudowski State Beach near Watsonville, uh, Gray Whale Cove State Beach in uh, near uh, Montara, uh, Providence Mountain State Recreation Area down in the desert, and the California Mining and Mineral Museum in Mariposa. Um, you know, so bottom line, uh, this looks pretty good compared mm -hmm. to where we were a year ago. The trouble is all of these deals, nearly all of them, are only one year. Most of the donations mm -hmm. were to keep them open for one more year. So we could very well be back in this situation unless Governor Brown and the legislature find a, a much more um, supportable, sustainable, long-term funding source for the parks. You know, if the governor had come out at the very beginning and said, I want to privatize or decentralize the, the, the funding and control of these parks, it might not have been all that palatable to people, but, yeah. but essentially threatening to close them and letting this happen, was this just sort of a backdoor way of doing that? You know, was that his intention all along? The whole think? thing uh, was a political train wreck. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of observers have said that what Brown was trying to do was find a program that the middle class loved. Because uh -huh. under Schwarzenegger, we kept hearing that the states broke, but the middle class was not feeling the pain. It was programs for poor people that were getting cut. And so they weren't believing that there was a problem. And if you don't believe there's a problem, you're not going to vote for more taxes. So Brown and his allies were looking for some middle class programs that the public would see. But what happened was the whole thing blew up in their face when journalists and others started saying, look, this is only $22 million out of a $15 billion deficit. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose as much money in tourism. Y if you have one fire in one of these parks from poachers or from trespassers or vandalism, you're, you're never going to save even this one-tenth of one percent of the deficit that you're trying to get. It's, it's basically an idea that won't save you any money. Mm -hmm. And then all these, 
these saviors came forward. So he's not even going to have any gates to close. So he sort of rushed to save face at the last minute and say, well, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm saving $10 million, so I've saved the parks. Well, it, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's something that uh, even during the Great Depression, no governor has ever closed a state park in California history. Well, hmm. Did we save the rangers to go with the park <laughs> space? <laughs> yes, that's a, that is a very good point. Um, there are several hundred open jobs of people who have retired, people who have gone to other jobs that are unfilled. And the number of rangers in state parks is essentially the same as it was 25 years ago, mm -hmm. even though the number of parks, the acreage, and the number of visitors has gone up. So they're stretched thinner and thinner and thinner. It means there are fewer of the kind of campfire programs that you, people enjoyed as kids where rangers talk about, you know, redwoods and stars and, and all that. And it means that um, a lot of the park system has been, has been building up a huge maintenance backlog. 1.2 billion we have right now in crumbling roads and, and you know, roofs that leak and all that. Mm -hmm. So the voters had a chance in November of 2010 with Prop 21 to raise their own registration fee for vehicles, $18 a year and that would have doubled the park's budget, would have fixed the problem forever. But they were in no mood. Remember, that was the Tea Party election. Yes. They were in no mood. They voted no. And now all the environmental groups, the people who love parks, they're, they're, they don't really have a clear idea on where to go next. But, you know, Brown has basically, as one legislator told me, has taken the parks out of the ICU, but they're still in the hospital. Well, that's all for tonight. <laughs> Interesting night. Lots of news. Thank you both, Paul and Josh.